أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد respected brothers and sisters my dear viewers uh, welcome to our program where we talk about the leader أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب صلوات الله وسلامه عليه we celebrate his birth and we celebrate his wilada since he is maulud of al kaaba the only one and only one who was born in the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our last series we were talking about the way imam ali was born and the father and the mother the, re the relationship between him and the holy prophet and we covered a lot of uh, important points today in this particular episode we want to talk about the tarbiyah of Ali bin Abi Talib how was he raised at the house of Rasulullah and of course starting with the house of Abu Talib and Fatima binti Asad the mother and the father respectively and we want to see the way he was nurtured and raised by the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam Ali occupied a very important place within the heart of the holy prophet and of course whoever was loved by the holy prophet definitely allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved him so we are talking about mauludul kaaba who was the beloved of the holy prophet beloved of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of course to bring something which is useful to you dear viewers we are as always with our dear Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Mirza Abbas Al Mubarak Al Mukarram, <laughs> Sheikh Al Jalil. Thank you welcome. very much. Uh, lovely to be here Khair. with you and with our viewers as well to really share, uh, you know, the, the 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 personality of this great man, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, Amirul Mu'minin, mm. Imam Ali alayhi salam. Uh, indeed uh, a very uh, very healthy a very informative uh, discussion alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah with your aid with your help we had a lot of points to share uh, you know with our viewers with the presence of them as, as well may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless them all inshallah uh, may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you Ilahi your family you inshallah and inshallah keep us family. all under the banner of Ali ibn Abi Talib Ali and that is very important because uh, we understand that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in one hadith he said in tafsir of suratul bayna lam yakun illadhina kafaru min ahli al-kitab until the end of the surah uh, where the ayah says inna alladhina amanu wa amilu salihati ulaika hum khayrul bariyya indeed those who believe and do, do good deeds truly those are the best of creation khairul bariya so the holy prophet said to imam amirul mu'minin anta wa shi'atuka ya ali these are you and your followers your lovers o ali so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah to make us among the proper followers of ali bin abi talib alayhi salam indeed indeed so shaykhna yes. to, to to start yes. our discussion today about the tarbiyah tarbiyah uh, when we talk about tarbiyah uh, the word which comes to me closely is the word rab mm -hmm. yes. tarbiyah yes the word comes rab, from the rab yeah. Yeah, yeah comes uh, here and the yeah. word rab is the one who takes care of something yes the one who is nourisher mm -hmm. the one who looks at something from the something hasn't become even something when it becomes something and after it will become. not become something right that is rab sure. when we talk about allah as rabbul alamin he is the lord of the worlds the word lord maybe is a loose translation but the one who takes care of all the mankinds and whatever is in the world and whatever we know and whatever we don't know allah is rabbul alamin a father in a house is known as rab 
The mother is Rabba. Rabba to bait is the mother. And from the father and the mother, immediate parents, we come to know the, the word tarbiya. Because they are they two together, when they work to nurture the child, to take care of, to make sure they lead a child to a proper upbringing, then that process altogether is known as tarbiya. So we want to talk about the tarbiya of Imam Ali alayhi salam, how the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa took good care of the tarbiya of Amirul Mu'mineen because we understand whatever we reap, that will sow. If we reap something good, we will, re we will sow whatever we, we sow, we will reap. Yes. So if it is a good thing, we will reap what is good. And if it is bad, tarbiya, of course the outcome will be there. Today, when we look at our youngsters, and unfortunately some of them who are followers of Ali bin Abi Talib, they don't have the, the good tarbiya. Can we say that this is because of uh, the amount of efforts we put in, or maybe we don't connect the tarbiya of Amirul Mumin to our children? Maybe, maybe not. But looking at tarbiya of Ali bin Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, we see that Rasulullah paid a lot of attention to the, the upbringing of Ali, and that's why we see Ali as Ali. Indeed, indeed, no doubt. I mean, uh, and at the same time, the parents as well, like for example, Hazrat Abu Talib and Fatima bint Asad. And, uh, you know, uh, one thing that I get reminded of is that the aspect of the uh, marifat, the knowledge and the understanding uh, of tarbiyat. And uh, if one really approaches, as you have introduced, a rab, you know, rabba as mother, uh, you know, father as rab of the house, for example, uh, you know, if one uh, bring that understanding in oneself, you know, I'm the rabba, you know, and I'm mean that I'm someone who would be caretaker of, care, of my children, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, the way God is taking care of me, you know, I should be like a mother. And the children would be the same way for their parents as well, if the ch parents show that sort of tarbiya to them, and the children will also take that. Uh, this just on the marifati aspect of tarbiya mm. itself as a phenomena, you know, yeah. tarbiya. Hazrat Ali alayhi salam, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Mawlud Kaaba, if you look at it, you know, Hazrat Abu Talib, always the priority for him was Rasulullah. Mm -hmm. You know, as, you know, as they say that sometimes the actions of Ahl Bayt is seen in the Quran. Mm -hmm. The Ahl Bayt will do something and the Quran will be revealed. You know, in mm. wa you know, wa rasuluhu, mm. right? Is the one who gives, you know, ruku, mm. in, who gives zakah. While he was in a state of ruku. In the state of ruku, he gave that ring. Mm. And then the eye came. Ah, or in Surah Dahar, you know, in Surah Insan, mm. for example. Ta wa 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 right. They fed food first and then the eye. The eye came after. Mm. Right. Now here, when we look at the 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 methodology or the way of the tarbiyat of Hazrat Abu Talib where Hazrat Abu Talib says that priority is Rasul mm. and the eye of the Quran says what? Mm. You know, Ma mm. Rasul and oh, wa awla mm. minkum. Mm. 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 You know, Rasul is awla. Mm. You know, Rasul is prior to all of you. Mm. Rasul is prior to yourself, to your bait, to your house, to your family. Who is prior? Rasul is. Rasul. An Nabiyu Aula bil Mu'minina min Amfusihim. Al Rasul Aula bil Mu'minina. An Nabiyu Aula bil Mu'minina min Amfusihim. Of course, he is Rasul. So yes. even if the Holy Quran has mentioned An Nabi, yes. but Nabi is Rasul. Is, yes, here. is Rasul here. Mm -hmm. Now, Tarbiyat of Hazrat Abu Talib, mm -hmm. he says priority is the Nabi, mm -hmm. priority mm -hmm. is the Rasul. Mm -hmm. Me, my children know. He would put, you know, his children in the bed of the Prophet Allah. so that people should think that, you know, they should not harm the Prophet. Allah. He would change the places where the Prophet will sleep with his own children. Right? Yeah. This is the tarbiyat. And this is Fatima binti Asad yeah. and Abu Talib. 
And, and truly speaking to what uh, you have mentioned and the books of history are mentioning is that Fatima binti Asad, there were many times when the food was little in the house, she and Abu Talib together, they decided we'll give the little of the little to our children, but we have to take care of Rasul. So taking care of Rasul, taking care of Nabi, why? Because they were investing in, into the life of the Holy Prophet who, whose future will benefit the whole Ummah. Yeah. So they were not looking only at this individual, they were looking at the outcome which will benefit the whole world. And because of that, you come to learn then the Holy Prophet, when he grew up, he used to take care of Aitam, Yatim. Yes. He used to take care of the orphans and the poor people. Why? Because of the same tarbiyah which Rasulullah got it from the house of Abu mm -hmm. Talib and Fatima binti Asad. And truly speaking, today, if we, especially if we teach by examples, our children will learn that. And Abu Talib and Fatima binti Asad, they taught tarbiyah to the Holy Prophet, to Imam Ali, to their children by example, by deeds and actions without even saying do this. And the children grew up to become the noble people who, of course, were taking care of the Ummah. Up to today, we talk about their merits. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's really amazing. And that's how you see that, you know, as you are saying about Yati. Now here, Hazrat Abu Talib putting his own children in danger in the bed where the Prophet used to sleep. Mm. So the enemies should think that this is the Prophet sleeping. Sure. Or if they harm, because they wanted to harm the Prophet, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if they want to harm the Prophet, they will not harm the Prophet, but they will harm the ch one of the child or one of the children. So Prophet you know, can be protected. Prophet can be. Then on the night of Allah Hijrah, Akbar. Amirul Allah Mu'minin Allah. sleeping in the bed of the Prophet. Yeah. This is the tarbiyah. Indeed, you indeed. Know, this is indeed, the tarbiyah. Indeed. He slept in the bed of the Prophet so the Prophet's life could be saved. Subhanallah. And, right. and it's amazing on that particular night, night of Hijrah, and we are going to talk about this in the future, inshallah, uh, future programs. You could see that the, the way Imam Ali alayhi salam slept on the bed of Rasulullah, when the Holy Prophet received the wahi, Jibrail came and talked to the Holy Prophet that the enemies are coming, their target is to kill me. But I can be saved if you are going to sleep on my bed. The question which Ali alayhi salam asked, Awa taslam, ya Rasulullah. If I sleep on your bed, will you be saved? He didn't say, what will happen to me? Will I be killed? Will I be injured? Because of the same tarbiyah from Abu Talib and Hazrat, uh, Fatima, Fatima binti Asad, both of them, they took care of their children to make them to become heroes of the future. Awataslam Ya Rasulullah, will you be saved if I sleep on your bed? The Holy Prophet said, Naam, you will be saved. And he slept properly on that night. Why? Because of tarbiyah. Yeah. And what I can see here is that Abu Talib was a hero. Fatima binti Asad was a heroine. And because of this, you can see that the children grew up as also they were heroes. Yeah. They didn't have fear. So what we can instill in our children is that that courage. idea, courage, you can do it, you can do it, and you can do it. We encourage them by not only saying, by even showing them. And uh, one of the methods is to make them understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because awwalu ma'rifat, awwalu din ma'rifatu. Because the first thing which our children need, need to know is to know their Lord who is Rabbul Alameen. Once they come to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they, they will be no any problem whatsoever in their tarbiyah. Rather than for us to start their tarbiyah, the upbringing of our children, we connect them with the material world. And it's unfortunate today the way we do this. We make that the children know that there is no any other world outside of what I have. So they become stingy, they become misers, they don't want to share, they don't want even to help others. And that's why when we take them, for example, when they grow up and we take them to the third world countries, when they see poor people and the poverty which is there, they are like kind of, what is this happening? They don't know even how to react. Because why? We have made this disconnection between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And I think we need to return to the nature, to the original way of uh, bringing our, of our children to connect them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way Abu Talib did and Fatima binti Asad with the Holy Prophet and the way the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did with Imam Amir al muminin Ali alayhi yeah. salam. And perhaps like as, as you said rightly, you know, that marifat, that knowledge, that understanding of God which brings about that reliance on God, mm. you know, that sort of tawakkul on God. Then all these things that you're mentioning in regards to the courage, you know, taking care of others, orphans, you know, once you, that, that uh, understanding of God sits into the heart, all of these things falls in the right place. And that's what we see. And uh, that's why you, you find that, you know, the right tarbiyat of Fatima bin Tazad and Hazrat Abu Talib, you know, on f for the Prophet, you know, at the same time, you know, their own children. And then it goes to generation after generation. Mm. You know, how Hazrat Ali alayhi salam all the time, you know, uh, was, was there to really protect the Prophet. When he is going outside, you know, as we know that in, in, uh, in, in, in Mecca, you know, you know his, he was persecuted. His message was persecuted, he was attacked, his life wasn't in danger, what he has to give. Mm. Uh, all of these things were there and he was there to protect. Now, one thing, uh, Sheikh Al-Jaleel, uh, Sheikh Ayyub, that is quite important uh, uh, to kind of shed some light is obviously, you know, uh, Quran started when Prophet was at the age of 40. Mm -hmm. And we tend to look at many of the references in regards to the historical accounts, references that are mentioned that Hazrat Ali alayhi salam was the first one to accept Islam, mm. for example, mm. right? Um, and this, yes, indeed, itself is an honor, you know, in a way, if we look at from outside, you know, yeah. as an Orientalist, as someone who is a historian, who's trying to write books or have, want to read books on Islam, they will say, oh, okay, Prophet Muhammad, you know, Muhammad was the messenger, and among the ladies, it was Khatija, who was the wife of the Prophet to accept Islam, and among the, you know, men, it was Hazrat Ali, alayhi salam, the mm -hmm. first one to accept. This is, yes, from a historical point of view, Orientalists would say, or whoever read their books, they will say, oh, yes, it's indeed an honor. But actually, you know, our Iman in regards to Hazrat Abu Talib, in regards to his personality, in regards to the Prophet, is you know, uh, is Avvaluma Khalq Allah Nuri. Mm. You know, first thing God created is the Muhammadan light. You know, they were there in terms of their spiritual reality. But it's the declaration. <laughs> yeah, I think you are right to, to mention that. And even to add to what you have said, for example, from um, uh, our brother's perspective, they say that the first one to accept Islam when Jibrail came to declare uh, Rasulullah as uh, the messenger of Allah in, with Iqra Abismi Rabbika Ladi Khalaq. So the Holy Prophet conveyed the message to the wife Khadija and Lady Khadija Salamullahi Alayha accepted Islam without any hesitation. And because Imam Ali Alayhi Salam used to live in their house, he himself became Muslim. But then, of course, in terms of uh, summarizing the process of accepting Islam, uh, some historians would say, so the first Muslim was Khadija, and the man, adults, Abu Bakr, and among the children was Ali bin Abi Talib. So of course this, this idea has been propagated and people came to take it as the reality. But the way we see and the way truly you have mentioned it is that Mawludul Ka'ba, Ali bin Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, he did not, uh, uh, did not uh, uh, accepted Islam the way we understand. Of right. course, he declared yes. that uh, this message, I acknowledge, yes, I've been with the Holy Prophet since my childhood. I was with Rasulullah. And it is correct to say that he was uh, uh, with the Holy Prophet and he accepted the message of Islam, he declared it. Because why? He saw the movements mm. of uh, the Risala, 
he saw the movement of Rasulullah in the cave of Hira and, then, and so on and so forth. So for him it was easy to declare the message right. of Islam. See, because everything requires its own specific time for it to come out. You know, the seed have the capability of giving the food, fruit from the very beginning. Inside the seed it has the pot, but it gives that fruit when that spring comes or when that you know, season comes, that's the time it will give that. Mm -hmm. So it has a time that requires that declaration, that manifestation of that faith. You know, so like for example the Prophet himself, you know, he was Nabi from the time of Adam. Mm. Right. He himself says that, you know, you know, of, you know, he's the first of Muslim in terms of the, uh, you know, hierarchy. You know, he's the first, you know, even before Adam, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. right? But the question is that Iqra, at the age of 40, it was required at that time for him to really... You know, it's not the question that, oh, okay, Iqra means prophet doesn't know how to read or doesn't, was unaware, you know, his heart was like, for example, some people, inshallah, perhaps, you know, the Safir will uh, will look into the reality of 27th of Rajab, mm -hmm. which is the Mab'ath, yeah, yeah. you know, which is the beginning of the Quran. Uh, was it really Prophet completely unaware? He does not know. And the angel comes, he is scared, he does not mm -hmm. know. He goes to the doctor, mm -hmm. you know, shivering. What happened? The doctor said, oh, maybe you are the Prophet. Mm -hmm. Prophet does not know, but the doctor say, oh, maybe you are the Prophet. You it know, was in, it was in like that, definitely. So, so it's quite, it's like that. Obviously the Ahli Bayt, Amir al muminin the time was to declare that openly in public, in terms of the esoteric reality, you know, they are the Mu'ahideen. You know, they are the ones who are, you know, uh, are, are, are annihilated in Gharq in Tawheed of Allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. right? That age of 13, yeah. which have the element of bulugh, mm, you mm, see, mm. that's the time to really pronounce, yeah. really declare, really kind of manifest sure. that iman. And, and, and truly speaking, if uh, we, we can learn a lesson from uh, the life of Imam Ali alayhi salam uh, to what is happening today, especially with our children, when they reach at this age, 13, 14, 15, age of bulugh, it is this time most of the youngsters will become rebels. They will not want to listen, for, exam for example, to their parents or to those who take care of them. So their tarbiya are bringing at this stage is very difficult. But look at Imam Amirul Muminin alayhi Of course, we are not comparing him with any of our children. He is Imam Ma'asum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored him. Mawlud al-Ka'aba, the only one who was born in the holy house, al-Ka'aba. Ali bin Abi Talib at that age, he was very young, 13, for him to understand the complex issues of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to understand the nature of the angels and the way the wahi would come. It wasn't easy for a young child of this age, but Ali is Ali. Yes. And because of that, he didn't have any hesitation. I remember one scholar, he mentioned that uh, when the Risala came and uh, when uh, Jibra'il declared to the Holy Prophet that you are the messenger of Allah and after Rasulullah came from the cave of Hira, went to the house, informed Khadija and Imam Amirul Muminin used to live at their house. So the Holy Prophet talked to him according to this scholar. He said that Ali, this now is a new message which came to me, it's Islam. I want you to go and talk to Abu Talib, your father. Ask him for permission if you can enter into my, in, into this religion. You can join me into Islam. According to this scholar, <clears throat> he said that Ali said, no, how can I go to my father to ask him permission about me following the religion which you have brought while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought me into this world without the permission, without asking the permission of my father. So it, it seems, that according to this scholar, I don't want to say whether this is correct or not, but what I'm, I'm trying to say here is that the understanding of Ali bin Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the relationship which was there, it is as if he was waiting for this moment to happen. 
because he was following Rasulullah. He said in Nahjul Balagha, I used to follow the Holy yes. Prophet's footsteps yes. the way the baby camel follows the mother. Yeah. This was my relationship with the Holy Prophet. So yes. we can say, Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salam saw the fasting as nur of the face of Rasulullah. And then he used to, to be taken care by the Holy Prophet wherever the Holy Prophet went, he was with him. And the conversation between Rasulullah and Jibrail Ali could hear or could, could notice something which was going on. Another point which you have mentioned very importantly is that before the declaration of Jibrail to the Holy Prophet that you are the messenger, Rasulullah used to walk in the deserts of Mecca, outskirts of Mecca, and he could hear the trees, the, the stones would say to the Holy Prophet, Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi. O oh, assalamu alayka ayyuhan rasul. O oh, assalamu alayka ya rasulallah o nabi Allah. These terminologies, they were said to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So I believe truly there were times when Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salam was walking with the Holy Prophet and he could hear whatever the, the voices which could come and he was waiting for this moment to happen. So he was... He was very lucky to be a young person and then yeah. to follow Rasulullah yes. as the messenger indeed, indeed. Exactly. when he was young. I mean, if you look at it, for example, you know, uh, you know, uh, the issue of uh, these things where you are mentioning the Hazrat Ali alayhi salam was hearing. And he mm. himself in Najwal Balagha says, mm. when Jibrail used to bring the wahi, I could hear. Yeah. I could hear shaitan crying. Allah. The cries of shaitan was heard by my ears. I could see Jibrail. I could see what Rasul sees. I could hear what Rasul is hearing, right? I could hear the cries of Shaitan when the nuzul of Quran mm -hmm. was happening. Right? Mm -hmm. So Hazrat Ali alayhi salam was on that maqam, was on that station already, you know, right from the uh, you know very beginning, right from that birth, mm -hmm. when he was you know born in in the Kaaba. He's the Maulud e Kaaba. And then that relationship with the Prophet and what he has said when he was born, for example, the conversation which took place, for example, you know, he was fully aware of it. But the point is that, see, for every, uh, you know, mission to begin and start requires certain uh, hikmat, wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm. certain tawfiqat as well. Indeed. Right. And, and God knows that when is that time to happen, mm, mm, right? Mm, mm, mm. Obviously, you know, God is fully aware of the whole creation. He's alim, mm. you know, when it will happen and all that. But there are certain things that requires to be fulfilled, you know, like a puzzle. Mm. Okay, when all of these things fulfill and everybody, f you know, fits in terms of their imtihan, they say, okay, now is the time to really manifest out. Indeed. You know, Prophet became Prophet and then he kept close his mission to the close companions. And then he said, now go Elan, mm -hmm. go outside. And right? it doesn't mean that when he was with his friends, he was not the Prophet. Mm -hmm. no, no. Right? It doesn't mean that when Jibrail came, oh, he realized he's. No. Mm -hmm. every, every, every moment, every sort of reality to really manifest out requires a hikmat, requires a time. And at the same time, there is that test of, of that individual as well. Indeed, indeed. That shakhsiyat, that personality as well. Is he really ready or not? Yeah. You know, are you sure what you're saying, Ali? Mm. Are you sure what you're declaring? Mm. Are you sure what you're manifestating? You know, now you have reached to the point to manifest out. Like, for example, we say, okay, bulug is the age. Yeah. To really, after that, everything becomes wajib. So are you sure ready. You know, what you are accepting? Are you ready? Yes, physically you are ready. Now in terms of that aspect of ma'rifat and all that is required. You know, take it serious now. You see? Yeah. So therefore, you know, in terms of that iman, in terms of that belief in tawheed, you know, all was there. You know, it's the time for that zahiri aspect, mm. the exoteric as aspect to for the people. Mm. Now once again, uh, there, there, are, there are two things here. One is that kamale insani, that perfection of that child. I am ready now. 
now I do express it. Mm. So I have reached in terms of my esoteric reality that perfection. In terms of my manaviyat, I have reached that perfection. Mm. Now, from now on, the journey is the exoteric. See, mm. right? Mm. That's why they say that, okay, who will be your wali in Dawat e Zula Shira, which we'll talk. Mm. Eh. Right. Ali, Ali will be, yeah, mm. right. Ali will be, right? Yeah. Ghadir happened. Ali. Right. Allah so, therefore, Allah. I mean, it has already happened. Yeah. Ghadir have already taken place in Dawat e Zula Shira on a limited scale. Mm. Okay, on a larger scale, Ghadir takes place later on. So just in terms of that Tawheed, in terms of that Kamala, the Manavi, the Ahl Bayt, Amirul Mu'minin have already taken place that. The mm. Prophet, on, the point is now for the outward, for the exoteric ex aspect to really express their Iman, Ahsan. to show people, right? So now I was saying there are two things here. One is of that person, you know, for example, that in San, because they are Ana Bashurun Mithlukum Yuhaile. Well, Ana Bashurun Mithlukum. The Prophet is like a Bashar. The Masumin, Ahl Bayt, they are all like human beings. They are in this world and they have to go through this journey in this world like all human beings. You know. So now, one aspect of theirs is their worldly aspect, you know, for them to be ready for it. Mm. Right? They are ready, right? For that moment right to take moment. place. Yeah. Mm. That's why. And also there is aspect of the Ummah. Is the Ummah ready? Is the Ummah ready? Mm. Right? The aspect of the Ummah is, okay, Rasul is ready from day one. He is that maqam yeah. of Nabuwat. But Risalat is depend on the Ummah. Ahsan. Is the Ummah ready? And to really take that Quran, to really yeah. take that message. And that point is very important. If we can just connect with the Imam of our time, Al Hujjah ibn al Hassan al Mahdi, Ajjal Allah, Farajah Sharif, most of the time we say, Ajjal Allah. We, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten his duhur. So the, the second point which you have mentioned is very important. But are we ready? He is always ready. Yes. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides for Imam Mahdi alayhi salam to come today, are we ready to welcome him? Are we ready to support? So that concept of we to be ready is very important to be thought about it. Yes. Now, coming back to yes. the, the uh, youth or the young age of Imam Amirul Mu'minin alayhi salam, we come to learn that now he's 13 years of age. The Holy Prophet has been declared officially in front of the people that he is Rasul. But prior to that, you can see that there was a movement from the Holy Prophet himself. Going from Mecca to Ghari Hira. From the cave of Hira to Mecca. Mecca to the cave of Hira. For those people who have gone for Hajj, they know that today, okay, you can take a bus from Maka city center to the cave of Hira is, is not very far. But the, it, it was like three miles from Maka to the cave of Hira. The Holy Prophet used to go between Maka and Ghari Hira, going and coming back, staying in the cave of Hira, which the cave of Hira is, is on the mountain. To climb is not easy. So now the Holy Prophet had uh, a regime, if I can call it. He used to stay in the cave of Hira maybe for three days, maybe more, maybe less. There is no electricity there. There is no water. There is no food. There is no any house uh -huh. around it. But he used to go there in our kind of loose uh, understanding. We say he used to meditate, to do tadabbur, to think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to think about the ummah. How can I manage to guide the Ummah? So now there are two people, two personalities here. We see we, who are helping the Holy Prophet. One is Lady Khadija, salamullahi alayha. And another one is Amirul Mu'minin Ali bin Abi Talib, salamullahi alayhi. They used to go take food to the cave of Hira, take water to the cave of Hira, support Rasulullah, going back and forth until Jibrail came to declare the message. Three years, maybe more, maybe less. How did Ali alayhi salam manage to go? You can say, okay, Khadija was the wife of the Holy Prophet. Wives were so 
strong at that time. They could walk, they could carry food, but it's not easy. Salamullahi ala Khadija. But yeah. Imam Amir al yeah. as a young boy, 13 years of age, maybe he started from there. You can see the way Tarbiya molded him. He never complained to say, Rasulullah, uncle, this is difficult for me. I can't come the way today's children may say. But Ali used to do that uh, regime of going and coming back, carrying the food. And this is exactly what you have said. He was prepared for the mission to be wasi of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's practically speaking, it's, it's like as you said and how nicely you, you mentioned, it's not easy for a child, you know, uh, you know for his cousin who is the Prophet, mm. to really perform this activity of the climbing the mountain at night. Mm. It's so scary, you know, but there is that, you know, that haydar, mm. you know, he mm. is that mm. sort of mm. like power, yeah. that qudrat is there, that courage is there. And uh, apart from, you know, uh, that aspect of food, water, supply, is the aspect of protection. Awesome. Because Prophet's life was always in danger mm. when Hazrat Abu Talib was, because the fortune tellers have already informed that, you know, there will be a Prophet, you know, who will come, yeah. you know, with the last message. And they were looking for, you know, for this boy to be, mm. you know, to, to kill him, to stop that message. All these, you know, evil people and Satan worshippers, they were, right? Look, that's why, you know, the Yahud, you know, migrated to this place to accept the last Messiah Indeed. and all that, you know. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons why they kind of, uh, you know, uh, Hazrat Abu Talib died a very, Hazrat Abdullah died a mysterious death was before born, is was that. Because mm -hmm. they say it's from this child. Mm. You know, that mm. Noor is mm. seen in Abzat Abdullah and he's the father so they wanted to really hurt him and kill him even thinking that you know and he was the born. The child yeah. is not born yet. Right. Mm. So with all these calculations because he's the last prophet. Mm. Right. Mm. So yes so there was not only this uh, aspect of food and staples but it was also the aspect of protecting the life Asant. of the prophet. Yes. Uh, and, and this point is very important so you can see the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam supported that, uh, that uh, protection. That he didn't say, oh Khadija, because you're a woman, stay at your house, don't come here. He knew that uh, she will be a role model and other women will emulate whatever Khadija has done. Rasulullah didn't say to Ali bin Abi Talib, oh you are young, Yabna uh, Ammi, or oh, son of my, my uncle, stay at your house, don't come. This is, is a danger. But it was that tarbia the Holy Prophet wanted yeah. to show us that, you know what, in order for your children to be special in the future, they need to endure the problems, calamities, difficulties here and there, because Naru Jahannam Ashaddu Harra, the hellfire. That is severe than whatever issues, problems which happen to our children here and there. If Rasulullah wouldn't allow Amirul Muminina Ali bin Abi Talib to be one of the protectors of his mission, not even just him per se, then we wouldn't learn a lesson from Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salam. So today, I think if there is a lesson for us to learn, to apply with the, 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 the upbringing of our children is we need to, to make them be involved in our Salatul Jama'ah. Let them be involved in the fasting, the holy month of Ramadan, now in Rajab, in Sha'aban, Mustahabbat, Salatul Lay. Let, let them participate. So when they ask you, but dad, mom, why do I need to do this? Remember Ali bin Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. The holy prophet never said, no, Ali, don't come. Because why I want you to participate from the beginning of this mission, because people will come and see your example and they will follow it. Right, right. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very uh, amazed and very, uh, I like your approach. Barakallah. Because you tend to always point out to the practicality Alhamdulillah. our children and tarbiyat of this time. Yes, we are talking about the tarbiyat of Amirul Mumineen, but I think there's a lot for us to 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 take from there mm. for our children mm. you know for our uh, for our children that you know islam is not 
like drinking water. I mean, mm. it's not easy thing. Indeed. It's tough. Indeed. A lot of imtihan, a lot of test will come about. Indeed. You know, right from that very young age, no matter where you are, you know, you will face a lot of, you know, test. Indeed. A lot of difficulties. Indeed. Uh, and at the same time, uh, you know, unfortunately in the West, we tend to see less of a suffering. Mm. Uh, we tend to, you know, uh, make our children preoccupied with, you know, with uh, imaginal world, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, like with games and gadgets and all that. They are far away from the reality. Indeed. You know, they, Indeed. they spend more th of a time into these things. Indeed. You know, instead of really putting their, you know, as they say, you know, they getting their hands dirty with the clay. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. Indeed. You know, and uh, maybe inshallah in the next series we'll, we'll talk about how Imam Amirul Muminin participated in the spread of the mission after the receiving of uh, official message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Jibreel and the Holy Prophet was declared officially as Rasulullah. Uh, because of the time maybe we need, we need to uh, end with uh, asking the questions that uh, how can we make our children to follow the tarbiyah of our okay. imma alayhi salam and starting with imam amirul mu'minin ali bin abi talib salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi mawludul ka'ba because the holy prophet himself was there to take care of his tarbiyah and then we can see that tarbiyah was with imam hassan with imam hussein and all the children of ali bin abi talib salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi so starting with ali alayhi salam Maybe we need to mention only a few yeah. Uh, yeah. lessons which sure, uh, sure, the viewers inshallah. can get the benefit. Yeah. So when we celebrate the wilad of Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salam, it needs to have that uh, meaningful. Yeah, reminder for yeah. our children. For our One thing that I would like to say for sure, uh, Sheikh, uh, is that, you know, see, one of the m very important aspect of this tarbiyat, which Amir al got in him, is that protection of that deen, mm. of the Qur'an, of the principles, of the values through him, through his life. Mm. He is the caretaker of that. And he is the caretaker of the Prophet. Mm -hmm. He is the caretaker of the Qur'an. MashaAllah. You know, see, Rajab is, as we said earlier in our first program, is a special month. Mm. And God chose this month for the birth of Kaaba, mm. or for the birth in the Kaaba, mm -hmm. you know, of Hazrat Ali alayhi salam. Mawludul Kaaba. Mawludul Kaaba in Rajab and the Nuzul of Quran in Rajab, Allah 27th Allah. of Rajab. Mm. So the protector of Quran comes first on the 13th of Rajab Allah and Allah. 27th the Quran begins. <laughs> MashaAllah. You see? MashaAllah. So there's like, there's What's some the relationship. Indeed, indeed, you know, indeed. He protected the Quran. Mm. You know, he protected the Prophet. Indeed. You know, the one who brought the Quran. Yeah. So in Tarbiyat we have to, you know, give that message to all children that you have to be the caretaker. Mm. Hold these principles and values of Tawheed, of your deen, of, you know, of human values, of sharing, of kindness, of truthfulness. Mm. He is Siddiq, you know, Al-Akbar as he himself Indeed. said. These values you have to, you know, bring that. Ahsan, I think this, this is very important if, and if there is uh, another lesson which we need to remind, especially our young viewers, is that uh, with hardship, comes ease yes and we will not be able to be strong people in terms of faith and even physical if we just want life to be as easy as whatever we think uh, without facing any difficulties and problems if Ali bin Abi Talib is our of course our Imam our leader and we follow him we celebrate his wilada we look at him and the way he faced difficulties it is that which we need to bring into our children's life. Maybe if there is any, any last point no, we, we need no. to mention. Yeah, okay. shukran jazeela. Always is a pleasure to be with Sheikh uh, uh, Mirza Abbas, mashallah, with uh, his knowledge. I'm sure we have learned a lot. And inshallah, we are going to meet with him again where we are going to have these discussions uh, on the wilada of Imam Amirul Mu'minin Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salam. When we celebrate the wilada, we say Mubarak to you all because we celebrate the Wilad of Mawlud al kaaba But at the same time, in order for this celebration to have meaningful, we need to apply all those lessons in our daily lives. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower us with mercy through the blessings of Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salam. Make our houses inshallah to be filled with the joy of Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salam. And inshallah we'll meet again. We will be with my dear brother, colleague, Sheikh Mirza Abbas to have more discussions on the wilada of Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salam. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ali ya gay, Ali ya gay, Ali ya.